Don Kent is peering into a water tank about the size of a backyard swimming pool. He's waiting for his fish. There's some big guys in there. Here they come. A school of 10 yellowtails swim by, each about four feet long. That's a big fish right there. Kent heads the Hub Sea World Research Institute. He's leading us through the lab where his scientists are breeding fish. I ask if he has names for them. I try not to name things I intend to eat. So. <laughs> Kent won't be eating these fish, but he hopes we'll all be chowing down on their offspring in a few years. Hub SeaWorld is partnering with a private investment firm to create the Rose Canyon Fisheries Aquaculture Project. There are already fish farms in the United States, but this one will be near San Diego's popular beaches and will be the largest yet. At its largest, the proposed farm would be 48 cages divided into two grids. The grids will cover about one-fifth of a square mile, the same size as the parking lot around Qualcomm Stadium. Anchor lines will run from the cages to the bottom of the ocean. Those lines extend out, so the whole project will cover about 1.3 square miles, the same size as Balboa Park without the Naval Center. The cages could have poles that extend 16 feet above the water, but Kent says we won't see them from the shore. He has computer modeling that shows the cages won't look like this, but like this because they'll be below the horizon. To test that out, I did some trigonometry. My calculations showed if you're lying on the ground at the ocean's edge, you'd see the top third of a 16-foot pole. If you're standing up, you can see more. Environmental group San Diego Coastkeeper is concerned about the scale of the project, not just how it will look, but how it will impact the marine environment. More on that tomorrow. They took out their boat to where the project would go and held up a pole. I went to Sunset Cliffs and looked for it. They're just a really small dot out there. So if you were walking by, I'm not sure that you would necessarily notice. Whether it's visible or not, Kent is betting the U.S. needs his project. That's because 91 percent of its seafood is imported, and countries like China that produce a lot of fish are now keeping more for themselves. So the price of seafood is going up higher and higher for people like us that have to import it. So the big advantage we have over those other supplies is from the fact that we can grow it locally. The U.S. already does produce some seafood and doesn't eat it. That's because Americans don't always like the fish native to our coasts, so we import from other countries, according to food journalist Paul Greenberg. His book American Catch describes a seafood swap. We tend to export stronger tasting things like mackerel, um, black cod, um, a lot of squid, and then we import sort of neutral tasting things like shrimp, um, also tilapia, and these are both very, very neutral tasting things that you can kind of deep fry and, and, and use in a, you know, sort of the American palate friendly, um, you know, sandwich. He says aquaculture can help correct this imbalance, but... Rather than trying to kind of start up, you know, new and complicated ventures, it'd be first off, let's try and eat the fish that we've already got. But aquaculture solves more global problems than Americans not liking fishy fish, according to Don Kent with Hub SeaWorld. There's 7 billion people on Earth now, and there's going to be 9 billion people before in your lifetime, very, very soon. How are we going to feed those extra nine, uh, 2 billion people? Kent says one way to do that is through aquaculture. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News.